Hey guys, it's Joe from TheDIYColdPlunge.com and I'm going to show you exactly how I frame the cold plunge that I'm keeping outside year-round in Minnesota. In this video, we're starting with the base frame. Printable plans for my entire system will be available. If you're interested in that, sign up for the newsletter link below. I'm also on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. If this video is helpful, subscribe to the channel and let's dig in. So here's each eight foot length laid out into what it was cut as, the, the green treated, ground contact is right here, the framing lumber on this side. I'll give you a panning shot of each board and the length that it was cut to now. So in the back, using two eight foot two by fours, I've got two 78 inch lengths, then three 29 inch segments, all coming from one two by four. And then we'll need 12 22 inch cuts. That'll come from three two by fours. Onto the framing lumber, similar as the first two pieces, we have 78 inch lengths to begin with, um, scrap on the end, and then out of two different two by fours, we need five 29 inch lengths. What we have for scrap is this bunch on the end, and then you'll have a little bit of scrap on the top. I was able to utilize some other two by fours from other projects, so I don't have scrap there, but the, if you're using fresh two by fours, you'll have some of that. I will have an illustration in the downloadable PDF of all of this stuff, but hopefully just laying it out like this and having it labeled will help with assembly, your cut plan, everything like that. So I've flipped back and I've laid out the base and top assembly of the cold plunge frame. Uh, one piece that I added from scrap was an 18 inch piece here. And again, what I did was squared off one side, cut off the other side. This doesn't need to be exactly 18 inches. This is actually a little bit under maybe an eighth in, inch or so, but what it, really the purpose that it's serving is extra support when that tub is filled up because it's gonna be really heavy. I've gone around and I've put X's on every spot where we'll drill pocket holes. Um, so then, you know, cruising through this will be really easy. I'll show you that now and then we'll get to making holes. So as we go through this project, really the only pieces that will get pocket holes are the ones that run this way. So every 29 inch board will get pocket holes on the bottom and the top, so right there, right there, right there, right there, and so on for all of these. The 18 inch board will get pocket holes there and there, and then the same thing on the upper assembly. 29 inch boards get pocket holes at the top and the bottom. So I'll time lapse this through and we'll get to it. So now I flipped this middle portion on the side and I just want to make sure that I get this centered. So half of 29 should be 14 and a half. So I'm just going to mark there, double check, 14 and a half, good. And 14 and a half there and 14 and a half there. And then half of three and a half, is 1.75. So at one and three quarters inches, I'll make a mark there. Double check that there. One and three quarter inches. And then as I assemble this part, I just want to make sure that I roughly line up the lines that I just marked with each other and then pocket hole those together. So there we go. I'm going to set that off side for now. Next up is to put this piece in place. We want to do that first so then we can find the center to put those uh, reinforcement pieces in. So if you're like me, your framing might just be a little bit tight and that is okay. We should be able to kind of get this to work by using a little force and then if you need to grab a hammer or something like that just to tap it you know exactly where it needs to be there's no harm that will happen because because i already took this measurement but measuring from that edge we want to go 57 inches so i drew my mark at 57 right there and 57 right there and we want the outer edge of that two by four to line up with our 57 inch mark. 57, there we go. 
So, like I said, give that a little tap. If needed, wiggle it around, get it right where it needs to go on both sides. And then attach it with the pocket hole screws. Do the same thing for the upper assembly. So, 57 inches. I'll make my mark there. I'm actually gonna grab a pen to have it be a little bit more accurate. So, using a handy dandy square, I will get to 57 inches and just draw my line there. Over here, same thing. Get to 57 inches, draw my line there. And that's what I need. Now, back to the base and adding in our support section here. What I want to have happen is have this distance be the same as this distance. So right now, this is 13 and a half, and this is 11. So we've got to head that way. Let's see, if, let's see if that was too much. So we've got 12 inches and 12 and three quarters. So we'll head down a little bit more yet. A little over 12 and a quarter and a little less than 12 and a half. Just gonna tap it along a little bit. I've got time to fuss with this, so I just wanna make sure that it'll, get, it'll be right. And there we go, 12 and a half and just under 12 and a half. I just wanted to make sure that that was nice and flush, so I popped it up a little bit and then tapped it back down even. And that is how you assemble your base and upper frame. In the next video, we'll be building the 22 inch uprights and attaching all of these pieces together. For more tips, you can follow me at DIY Cold Plunge on basically all the social channels and put your email in the newsletter to stay updated on when these plans are available.